Okay, this is to Mary. Will an antibiotic fix SIBO? So Mary, you were the you were the generator of this. I talk about this all the time. I'm like, it's just like, uh, it, it, I can't believe that I haven't had done this before. So okay, so can an antibiotic fix SIBO? No. <laughs> Now, those of you out there who have taken antibiotics go, yeah, but I feel better. It can do that. Okay, so here's the full thing on antibiotics. So what is SIBO? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's an imbalance where your, your, your good and bad bacteria balance of like 80 to 20%, 80% good bacteria, 20% bad bacteria goes kablooey. All right? And for a variety of different reasons, like you got food sensitivities, poor digestive function, stress, all these, all these things that can cause the mechanisms that cause SIBO, you develop more bad bacteria than good bacteria. Okay. And once you have more bad bacteria, that's bad. You start getting bloating, you start getting distension. And the next thing you know, you get alternating constipation, you get diarrhea. It crawls up your little intestines, your small little intestines, and it affects your gallbladder. And next thing you know, you're not digesting your fat soluble vitamins. It comes all the way up to your stomach. You're getting acid indigestion and are giving you a all for it which is just perpetuating a problem, by the way. So basically, um, it's, it's a fulmination of bad bacteria. So wouldn't an antibiotic be appropriate for that? Well, yeah, yeah. An antibiotic would absolutely be appropriate for that. And it is appropriate. Wait, wait, you just said it wasn't. That's not what I said. An antibiotic is absolutely appropriate for that. And it will kill all of the bacteria, not just the good ones, you're probably already familiar with this. It's going to kill the bad ones too. Let's just say that you're uh, educated in this area enough, okay, because people are on the internet all day long now uh, looking at this stuff. And you're looking at me, right? And so uh, let's just say you're doing that and you know enough to re inoculate yourself with probiotics, okay? That's a good thing to do. A lot of people don't do enough. A lot of people you uh, just start looking at different strains. It's just like you know you get the you get the biggest probiotic on the planet. Um, I use something called ProBioMed 250. Um, that I'm not shilling for it or anything like that. It's just the one I use. Uh, but you want something up like that, like 250 billion. I have people come in and go, yeah, I did like 15 uh, billion. I that's like peeing on a forest fire for somebody who's just gotten their entire floor. Away. So let's just say you just did, you just, you went to the doctor. Yeah, they use, I think, I think, I think they like Remicade if that, maybe I'm wrong on that. Rifaximin, they like Rifaximin. I'm sorry, that's Remicade. Is it? Sorry. Um, they like Rifaximin, it gets rid of it. You feel good for a while. You feel good, you you put your probiotics back in there and you're feeling, if you put your probiotics in there, you might, you might feel good for a couple months, maybe months. If you haven't used probiotics, you might feel good for two or three weeks or four or five to six weeks. And in the meantime, what happens is the processes that have created the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth are still there. You haven't done anything about that. What created the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Okay. So, um, so that's a problem. So, so the SIBO is a tool, or, or I'm sorry, the SIBO, the, the, um, the antibiotics are a tool that can be used in the framework of getting rid of SIBO. Now, I'll give you an example. I, I, I Probably a dozen times a year, I'll have a patient that has started care with us. And we've evaluated them, and part of their, and part of their evaluation was that they had SIBO. And, and in, in my world, when a person has SIBO, that's like, like the first thing that's got to go. And that and the things that caused it are the first things that have to go. And so they'll call me and say, you know what, you know, I, I was just started and, 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 I was, and, and, and I was feeling good and I got COVID or then I got, or then I got, I got whatever, I got sick. COVID was a bad example. Then I got some sort of a bacterial infection uh, or I developed candida or whatever it was and, and they're giving me antibiotics. I got a sinus problem. I got a sinusitis and they're giving me, and they're giving me antibiotics. Yeah, I mean, is this going to ruin everything we're doing? I'll go, no. This is actually going to work faster than what we were going to do, but I'm not a medical doctor, so I wouldn't give you antibiotics. But 
it's actually going to kill the seba faster than using herbs and botanicals and all the diet and all that type and low fodmap diet and all that type of stuff it's going to okay anybody says it's not hasn't done this for a living so basically you can do that and we'll say no this is good because now you're going to kill the SIBO. Now we don't have to spend the four to 20 weeks or whatever it is, depending on the person, to get rid of the SIBO, six to 20 weeks or whatever it is. And we just move on. And here's the catch with fixing all of the things that caused the SIBO in the first place. And that's what the antibiotic doesn't do. And that's what medical doctors don't do. And I have medical doctor colleagues don't think I'm banging the medical doctors, okay? It's just not what they do. All right, that's not what the medical doctors do. That's not what anybody does. That's in that field. It's not even what a lot of people do in the alternative field, frankly. So you ha so so they get that SIBO out of the way with the antibiotics, and and then we start to work on the things that caused the SIBO. We start to work on the broken down digestive system. We start to work on their food sensitivities. We might start to work on other things like stress responses. There's there's like I I could name like twenty five different things that cause SIBO. There's three major ones, and I covered in another video. But, um, but anyway, so, so that's that. I mean, you know, they also have fecal implants. I, you know, I, this has nothing to do with, an, with pro antibiotics or anything, but it's just an example. You can go and get fecal implants. Now, I, 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 don't, I haven't kept up on it, but, uh, you know, up to a couple of years ago, it was like 25 grand. If your insurance company paid for it, you know, obviously they paid for like 80% of that or whatever it was. And then they take... <laughs> feces that they got out of another person who doesn't have SIBO and supposedly has a great uh, microbiome. I don't know how they figure that out, but they take it and they put it in the person who has SIBO and that helps them. That helps them to get, because they just overwhelm the system with good bacteria. It brings the balance back to normal and a person feels good for a while, for a while, not, not forever. Why for a while? They can only feel good for a while because they haven't corrected what caused it in the first place. So it's going to come back. It is no different than you going online and, and, and looking for all these SIBO products and you go and you buy $650 worth of SIBO vitamins, you get on a FODMAP diet, you feel better for two, three, four, five, six weeks, two months, and then it all comes back. So, so yes, antibiotics kill SIBO. Antibiotics kill the bad and the good bacteria. They wipe out SIBO. If you have done this, um, and if it's a couple of months out, it's probably too late to start doing the probiotics because you may have started developing SIBO again because you haven't corrected the thing that caused it. And then you could start taking the probiotics and then, um, and then you can start to bloat again. And then you're going to go like, what the hell is going on here? That's what the hell is going on here. You haven't fixed the problem. You're developing it again. And so, and so now if you take the antibiotics, the probiotics too late, now you could actually blow yourself up. And, uh, and there are probiotics out there that you can take at that time that, um, that have removed all the strains that will blow up your SIBO. And that is the person who just went through antibiotics. It went away. It's three or four months later. Now they're listening to this and they're, and they're, and they're like, oh my God, I got to put probiotics in there and they're going to put it in there and then they're going to blow up. and They're going to go like, what do you tell me to do that for? So I'm telling you not to do that. But there are antibiotics, probiotics, probiotics that have taken out the strains. Um, I use one called Cbiotica. It's from Apex. I'm not a shill for Apex. I don't get any money from Apex. I use lots of different uh, companies, but that happens to be one of the primary ones that I use. And you can use that one. It's called C Biotica because it has um, taken out all the strains that would blow up SIBO and you can start to re-inoculate yourself with that. It takes a little bit longer. Uh, but still, just know even doing that is not going to stop you from not getting SIBO again because you haven't taken care of the things kind of upstream that have caused the SIBO in the first place. So yes, antibiotics work, that's, but that's the full context of how antibiotics work and their limitation. They will eliminate the immediate infection, but that's it, but that's it. And, and, and if you haven't done anything else, it's coming back. So that, Mary, is, uh, is uh, 
my experience and my understanding, I think it's backed up in the literature um, of antibiotics and their uh, effectiveness in, in, in getting rid of small intestinal bacteria.